the idea was to go and do a compilation album over there. I was, uh, you know, blown away by the country, obviously, by Havana particularly, and discovered all these great artists that didn't have record deals, from Denai to Ogire to all these different amazing people from hip hop and jazz and rumba. And I did a record um, two years ago now called Havana Cultura, and then that did pretty good. We did some touring, did all the big festivals and stuff with a pianist called Roberto Fonseca. Yeah. And then they asked me to go back and do another one, and I thought, yeah, that'd be good, we'll do another one. But I wanted to twist it, so that's why I brought in Mala, because I wanted him to kind of approach the project differently to the way I'd approached the project. So I basically introduced him to all that I'd been introduced to myself, the studios, the sounds, the rhythms. And uh, we recorded a bunch of stuff, and then he took it back to the UK, and he twisted it his style, which is what we're here for today, to the launch of his album, Mala in Cuba. He was playing some of my records. He'd been coming down to DMZ to check out some of the parties over the years. Um, I'd done some radio shows on his BBC show and his podcast with him. So we just kind of knew each other, just kind of like a few mutual respect from you know the music we'd been doing and stuff. And then obviously when we went to Cuba, our relationship deepened, and uh, you know it's uh, it's been a blessing. I never wanted I never wanted to work on an album in my life. I always like shied away from these things because it's an, a complete nightmare to try and make an album. You know, it was very challenging to do. Um, so yeah, I think me naturally, I always stayed away from it. So. Mala's of somebody I've been a real quiet um, fan of for quite a long time. You know, since I went to his club DMZ a few years ago at the Crypt in Brixton, and I was just sort of fascinated by the way he was releasing records and the sounds that he was coming up with. It was kind of like the natural progression of the UK sound system culture, whether that goes back to Bristol or is Channel One or, or, or you know, um, Shaka, or whether it's the drum and bass world. You know, Mala is very much part of that sound system ethos that comes out of the UK with the sounds, an ideology, a vibe and also the fact that he is Jamaican heritage and that Jamaica's next door to Cuba but they're so different as countries so you know on one hand you've got you got the reggae of Jamaica but you've got the rumba of, of Cuba and they're different languages yet they're so close so I thought it'd be really interesting to throw one of them into the other's territory and uh, and yeah it was kind of cool it could have gone either way really you know but he could either have been going where's the McDonald's or he could have been going where's the best uh, you know, um, rice and peas, and he went for the rice and peas, which was good. Um, and we all came back a bit fatter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was my first experience of Cuban music, without a doubt. You know, I'd, I'd um, I, you know, listen to Buena Vista Social Club, and over the years, I guess I've heard some Cuban music. Um, in terms of the rhythm, you probably hear more music that is Cuban influenced than you actually realise. Um, but to go to Cuba and to kind of hear stuff firsthand is a completely different experience, you know. It's, you've got lots of different rhythms in Cuba from, I don't know, like cha-cha-cha or merengue, mambo, um, I don't know, salsa, you know, all these things are, have different kind of rhythms. Um, and for me, it was, what I found interesting was listening to just the Congo player by himself or just the hi-hat pattern from the drummer by himself because I had all the parts separate, you see. Um, and sometimes I would just take the hi-hat line, you know, the hi-hat pattern from the, from the drummer and then I would build a track based on that. So for me, that's what I found most interesting was the, the real intricate rhythms of drumming in, in Cuban music. I'm really delighted with the way this has come. You know, it's been a long process in a way because Mal is a perfectionist and we're working in a kind of new area of music because we're fusing sort of different styles and thoughts and there's a lot of different attitudes and and individuals to incorporate in this you know there's a lot of musicians involved there's different cultures involved so that's been quite a long process of education and sort of you know a real sort of outside of our comfort zone type of journey which has been brilliant for both Mala and myself and the label and um, yeah I mean for me this is the most significant record that I've been involved with since Ronnie Size and Represent, which was about um, 10 years ago now. So, you know, I mean, I've done a lot of records since then and I'm proud of all of them, but in terms of a record that is so much kind of a key record in the history of um, UK dance music, for want of a better word, you know, I think that this is a record that's going to be looked on and looked back on in years to come as an important record. So I'm really proud of it. Um, 
But with this record, the whole start from start to finish, it was just a totally different process, so to speak. You know, the fact that somebody invited me to make an album was something I'd never done before. So already my mind was in a different mindset. Um, you know, um, so yeah, I never worked with live musicians as well. So that was something that was totally different. So my whole approach to this, I had to rethink everything. And as I said, I think a little minute ago, I really had to strip everything down, including myself, about what I thought I knew about music, what I thought about, what I knew about myself. Thankfully, I think I'm not really too concerned with finishing music. For me, the joy in what I do is actually the exploring. And that's being in the studio and exploring, exploring new patterns and new shapes and colors and frequencies. And if at the end of that you know, exploration, I discover something new and something that I can present to people, then that's kind of a bonus. You know, the funny thing was we spent so much time in the studio and we were very focused, but watching him in his little laboratory next to mine, because we had a different room each, and it also seemed to be a little bit more chilled out in his room than mine. It's a bit hectic in my room, but it was good. Until the day that Barcelona played against Real Madrid. I didn't think they were into football in Cuba. There's not that many TVs around, but when that day happened, the whole street entered in our studio, so we kind of got taken over for one day by the football fans. So that was a good moment. <laughs> Cuba is a beautiful, beautiful country. The, I, I love the people there. I love the, the way they are. I love the food. I love the fire that they bring. And um, I've got, I couldn't just pinpoint any one particular memory um, in terms of being a highlight of the trip. I can tell you a story about how one of the records came about. Is that um, we got me and Giles played at a house party in Cuba, and maybe like a hundred people turned up or so, and they put a sound system in this residential area. And I'm not meaning like a residential area where there's a, 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 a like a building there and then over there there's some houses I'm talking like there's a house next door and there's a house next door and we're in the middle and there's a big old sound system in this house on a Tuesday night now that can't go on anywhere in the world the police are coming and they're locking it off anyway so we're playing at this party now and I started playing one of my tracks called Lean Forward and this guy comes up to me and he goes oh can I play can I play and I was like what do you mean I thought he wanted to MC he pulled out his trumpet I said, yeah, go on then. So he started playing his trumpet over the track and he was killing it. So we said to him, come studio tomorrow at 11 o'clock and we recalled. So he came to studio, I, I played him some rhythms, he played, he played for me. And that was the, that's the trumpets that you hear in the Calle FA track. And that's how that track came about. And had we not gone to that party and done that, we never would have met the guy, you know? And uh, that was something that I always remember.